Okay, let's talk about some well-known conspiracies. Uh, and oftentimes these two different conspiracy theories will get combined and, and such. We'll just talk about each one by itself for at first. Uh, the JFK assassination is one of the more famous ones. You've mentioned that. Uh, different beliefs he was actually killed by the CIA, by the Russians, by his vice president, uh, or the mafia, or some group like that. The moon landing hoax, the claim is NASA couldn't really send astronauts to the moon, so they faked it. And they'll say, oh, look at the pictures of the astronauts on the moon. The lighting isn't right. The shadows aren't right. Um, how come you don't see pictures of the, how, how come you don't see the stars in the background of the picture? So they'll latch onto minor details like that and make claims that it wasn't really done on the moon. First of all, video experts will tell you for a scene where you have uh, a light source like the sun, like here in front of you or behind you, the shadows are right. The shadows are what you'd expect to see. And the stars don't show up because you've got a bright sun shining them out. And the video quality, the video technology wasn't good enough back then to capture the stars, the detail of the stars, especially with the big light source, the sun. Uh, uh, it, it's claimed that this was filmed in a studio and then live streamed or transmitted like a live broadcast from a film studio. Video experts will tell you the video technology back then was very primitive. We didn't have the technology to, to fake a live stream from a studio. Uh, it was actually technically much easier to actually send people to the moon uh, and send live pictures from the moon rather than to fake a live broadcast from a studio. We didn't have the technology to do that, to either do a fake live stream or to record it and send it out like a live transmission. Uh, flat earthers, of course, they, just like the moon landing hoax people, they allege that NASA is involved in a hoax, either to promote the moon landing or to, NASA and scientists are involved in a hoax to um, convince the world that it's, convince people that the world is round when it's really flat. They don't understand basic science. And you can kind of come up with arguments against them and they'll come up with some kind of ad hoc or temporary explanation on the spot. Uh, well, if you look at airplane windows, how come the world looks curved and they'll have some ad hoc explanation. Oh, the airline companies are faking it to persuade people. Oh, really? That's a lot of work for them. Various alien UFO conspiracy theories. Uh, actually, in a later segment, we'll talk again about alien sightings. Uh, so, for example, there is one theory, various theories that governments have actually made contact with aliens, that they have maybe actual UFOs, crashed UFOs, dead aliens, living aliens, uh, whatever. Maybe the aliens are among us and they're trying to take over the world. One event that is used here in 1947, an experimental military craft crashed in the state of New Mexico. It's kind of west of Texas, a little city called Roswell, town of Roswell. And the government was very secretive at the time about what crashed. Later, eventually, they revealed it was a secret airship, an experimental airship. But because the government was too secretive, the conspiracy theory got started that it was a UFO that crashed and the government had a UFO and dead aliens or live aliens. And there was also a fake alien autopsy video that showed a dissection of a dead alien. It was fake. There are also claims that aliens built the pyramids of Egypt and other historical structures. It's kind of assuming that the ancient peoples were stupid and didn't know anything about engineering. Um, actually, scientists have a good understanding of how the Egyptians built the pyramids. We know how they did it. We know their technology. We have a good understanding of how they actually did it. You don't need aliens. It wasn't slaves, by the way. Um, it was mostly paid laborers, not slaves. That's another myth. But we know how they did it. You don't need aliens. 
chemtrails and contrails. So see, if you, when you see jet aircraft, uh, planes flying way overhead, you see a right trail of what looks like smoke behind it. That's a condensation trail or contrail. Um, the air up there is very cold, like minus 40 degrees. And so the fuel and uh, water coming out of the jet engine, uh, burnt fuel and water and gas is coming out of there form a condensation trail. And you can find scientists who will explain it to you on YouTube. But conspiracy theorists think that it's not really contrails or chemtrails. It's actually a bunch of chemicals, harmful chemicals that airplanes are deliberately spraying on us in order to hurt us, kill us, or maybe it's their mind control drugs in order to control our thinking. Sounds crazy, but I know people who believe it. I know at least one guy who believes this. Uh, Anti-vaxxers, you know, they think that vaccines are harmful and cause autism. This is partly because of a fake study. There was a fake study published by a doctor a long time in the 1990s or early 2000s. It was later revealed that he just faked his data. He made up the data. And of course, the article was retracted or unpublished and he lost his medical license. But still anti-vaxxers believe in uh, information like that. The problem is that there's kind of a coincidence that um, it's just that symptoms of autism happen to start to show themselves around the time the kids are getting vaccinated. And it's always been the case that autism symptoms have shown up at those ages, even before vaccines were common. So that today we have better tools for diagnosing autism, so there are more diagnoses because we have better, we're better at detecting autism now. Uh, so correlation does not mean causation here. Correlation is not causation. The presence of autism symptoms that happen to be at the same time that they're getting vaccinated, there's no connection. And that's well known, it's proven. 9-11 uh, truthers, they call themselves truthers. They think they know the truth about 9-11, what happened. Uh, they'll say, well, jet fuel burns at 1300 degrees Celsius and it's not hot enough to make the steel in those buildings melt. Therefore, uh, the U.S. government set off bombs, explosions in the buildings to make them fall, to make them collapse. And it was maybe Jewish interests who wanted to get the U.S. into a war with the Arab countries or something like that. Uh, nonsense. Uh, first of all, there's no evidence at all for a Jewish conspiracy or other conspiracy behind 9-11 other than Osama bin Laden. Uh, and secondly, steel doesn't have to melt at 1300 degrees for the buildings to collapse. Uh, jet fuel burns around six to 700 degrees and at that temperature, steel, steel metal becomes soft. And you can find demonstrations by metal workers on YouTube showing this. At 600 degrees, steel becomes soft enough it bends like butter. And so the building loses its structural strength or integrity at 600 degrees and collapses. That's what happens. That's the truth. False flag attacks. You'll get to world domination theories later. False flag attacks. Okay. Uh, there are always these awful stories of mass shootings in the U.S. Uh, mass shootings where a lone crazy gunman kills a bunch of people. And there are some people who think that, oh, this is propaganda um, being stirred up by maybe liberals who want to take away our guns because we have the rights to own as many guns as we want to. Crazy, but okay. So there are conspiracy theories uh, designed to do maybe um, argue against the need for gun control in the U.S. So they will claim that these are false flag attacks by the government in order to provide an excuse for taking away our guns and our gun rights and our rights to own uh, as many guns as we want to. Because I need a machine gun to get those squirrels in my yard, right? Okay, so false flag, let me explain the concept. Let's take a hypothetical example. Let's say there are three countries who hate each other. Uh, the countries are bacteria, tomania, and hysteria. So hysteria is kind of a small country 
and it would love for bacteria and tomania to get into a war with each other, which would be really great for hysteria because they all hate each other. So what hysteria will do is it will send some soldiers into Tomania and the soldiers are dressed up like bacterian soldiers. They're wearing bacterian uniforms with a bacterian flag. Uh, and so they'll go into Tomania dressed like bacterians and they'll attack something in Tomania. And they'll try to make it look kind of like a secret attack and destroy something important. And suddenly Tomania is really mad because they think they were attacked by bacteria so Tomania goes to war with bacteria. And Hysteria is sitting back and just enjoying the show. This is great. The two enemies are killing each other. So it's a deceptive attack designed to look like someone else attacked it. So this conspiracy, conspiracy theory claims that these mass shootings are false flag attacks. It's actually the government. Uh, someone working for the government, a gunman, a, gunman, a shooter is maybe uh, being used by the government to uh, uh, to create this uh, public anger against guns, or uh, it's a false flag attack involving crisis actors. Nobody really died, they're all actors and special effects, and nobody really died. And then what's really bad is some of these conspiracy theorists will actually online attack some of the victims. They'll verbally attack or insult the victims of the shootings who, who lived, the families of the victims, and say, oh, they're just actors. Nobody, you didn't really, nobody really died. And it's completely awful, the things that they do to victims and victims' families, the, with these false claims that, oh, uh, it was all fake. They're basically claiming these attacks were either fake, didn't really happen, or they were conducted by a shooter who is being used by the government. It was a false flag attack. All right, moving on to world domination theories. Freemasons, uh, you might have heard of them, I don't know. So a mason is a brick worker, a stone worker, and in England and Europe centuries ago, the masons or Freemasons formed a guild or a union, um, to, uh, like a union, to promote, uh, protect and the workers and to promote their work and their occupation. And over time, this evolved into more of a social organization it wasn't just for stone workers anymore, but for anybody who wanted to join. It became a social club. And it became a very helpful social club to join because it was a good place to meet people, to network, uh, and to promote your career by networking and meeting people. And in fact, it became so common in some social circles, circles in England and the US in some places you were kind of expected to join in order to promote your career, advance your career, which is maybe not a good thing if you just, if you're pressured to join, but otherwise it was, there was no conspiracy, but because it's sort of like a secret society, it makes it sound more attractive to join. There's nothing really, well, the secrets are really nothing very interesting. A few rituals, it's just to promote, social bonding, if you feel like you have to do some secret rituals with a group of other men, if you feel like you're part of the club, and that's all. There's nothing really evil in it, uh, as far as I can discern. My father once belonged to the Masons, relatively low-level Mason. Um, and it's just you know, social meetings to meet people like you and meet other people and engage in some sort of rituals that build some solidarity, some bonding and friendship, uh, as far as I can tell. Uh, now, there are some churches, very conservative churches, will say if you're uh, in our church, you can't join the Masons. I think probably they're kind of jealous of their influence and power. Uh, but also, as my father told me, to join the Masons, you have to show you're a moral, good person. And in order to do that, it was assumed you had to be religious or believe at least in some way, in a god. So to join you, you had to say you believed in some kind of god or higher power, and that's all. And be, and uh, their belief their belief is that any religion is a way to truth or being moral, uh, in wisdom or whatever. 
And some churches don't like that. They think, oh, only our way is the right way to, to salvation and, and uh, truth. And they don't like the Mason saying, oh, any religion is okay. As long as you believe in any religion, it's fine. <clears throat> but because they were sort of secretive, rumors got started that they were a secret society, which then turned into more Illuminati type rumors are connected with the Illuminati or it's a secret society trying to take over the world. Because it was kind of, at one time, very helpful or expected to join in order to promote your career. Okay. Jewish bankers. Okay, so uh, obviously Jewish people were known for things like banking and law and certain professions. Why? Throughout the history of Europe, uh, Jews were looked down upon. Europe was very Christian and Jews were looked down upon as inferior. And so only inferior jobs were, allowed, were open to them. So jobs that were considered inferior, if you were kind of a very righteous uh, religious person, maybe banking was kind of not very holy because you're dealing with money. Money making doesn't, doesn't sound good, at least way back then. So certain jobs that were open to them, they became known for banking and uh, lawyers and, and certain professions like that, and they excelled at them. But because of the discrimination, you know, they happened to become excellent bankers. So then conspiracy theory starts, uh, all these prominent bankers are Jews. Well, maybe most of them are not religious Jews, they're just ethnic Jews, so, so what? Uh, but all these prominent bankers are Jews, and these rumors start, oh, it's a conspiracy. They're trying to take over wor the world because so many bankers are Jewish or have Jewish last names. Conspiracy, it's just anti-Semitic. It's more of the traditional anti Semitism that has been a part of European history, parts of American history. It's just anti-Semitic theories, falsely claiming that they are trying to take over the world by taking over the world's banks and controlling the banking systems. So you saw the Da Vinci Code movie, you saw the uh, case being made for how the Catholic Church is part of a conspiracy along with maybe the Illuminati or and or other secret societies uh, to take over the world and, uh, or to have at least a great deal of power through conspiracy. Aliens, we uh, believe that aliens are controlling the world. A newer belief that's arisen in the past 20 years is the reptilian theory. Uh, did you know that Obama and Hillary Clinton are actually aliens? Originally, they looked like reptilian, reptile aliens but they can look like humans. They can change their form or they're wearing masks. So Putin, Obama, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, they're really aliens. Did you know that? According to this theory, yes. It's a secret alien race and they're trying to take over the world. Uh, maybe they're part of the Illuminati. Maybe they are the Illuminati. But it sounds crazy, but there are people who believe in it now. Particularly a British guy, he's a little crazy guy named David Pike. I-C-K-E, Ike, he's the one who's promoting this kind of nonsense. No proof, no evidence. It sounds really crazy. Uh, but when people are already believing the Illuminati, it's not, I guess, not too hard to convince them that the Illuminati are also aliens, reptilian aliens. All right, now we get to the big one, Illuminati. Uh, the Illuminati, Illuminati once was a real thing. It was a real organization. It was founded in Bavaria, which is a country, uh, separate country now, part of Germany, southern Germany, 1700s. And these were basically rationalists, secular people, enlight people with enlightenment ideals who thought the church should not have political power, that the church had, the Protestant, Catholic, whatever, the church had too much power, too much influence on politics and governments. And they wanted to work against the influence of religion in government, in politics. Uh, but to do so at the time was politically risky because the church did have such power. And if you oppose the church in public, it was not good for your career. Uh, so they formed a secret society to work against the power of the church. So political leaders uh, and uh, other prominent people in, I guess, uh, science, academia, business, government, formed a secret organization. Now, after it was discovered, uh, 
some years later, it was outlawed, it was banned. There's no evidence at all that it, they continued at all. There's no evidence at all. But it's claimed that they went underground, they went, became even more secret and continued to grow and expand. And now it's a big, vast conspiracy involving political leaders around the world, the most prominent political leaders in various governments and top business leaders and top media people, media leaders and uh, academic intellectual leaders are all part of this Illuminati. So if they've been in control for this long, how come they haven't accomplished their goals of uh, pushing a world dictatorship upon us? They would have succeeded by now, I think. It's almost as if they didn't really exist. All right, so this is a well-known thing in Western culture now, Illuminati theory, for many of us is kind of a joke. Maybe one time last year, me and my friends were getting in an elevator, and we thought, oh, there are no cameras in this elevator. How are the Illuminati going to watch us here and know where we are? Okay, for some of us, it's a joke, but some people take it seriously. They really believe the Illuminati do exist or might exist. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Uh, the belief that there is a secret organization, massive organization, that's trying to take control of the world and hasn't been able to do it yet, strangely, in order to uh, bring us into a one world global authoritarian dictatorship or communist dictatorship or alien dictatorship. The alien stuff with Illuminati, that's a new combination, alien and Illuminati's. That's a very new thing. There are many flavors or versions of Illuminati theories, and the alien one is kind of a new, since the reptilian theory came around in the past 20 years. Uh, so there are often lots of combinations theory, different flavors of Illuminati theories, uh, like what you saw in the Da Vinci Code, uh, that combine the Illuminati with the Catholic Church, Masons, Jewish bankers, other secret societies, aliens, reptilians. Uh, and by the way, you see this um, symbol here, this is from the American dollar bill. Uh, and that was designed uh, after the US became an independent country. And so some people think that's an Illuminati symbol. Think, oh, that's the eye of the Illuminati looking over you. Uh, it's not. Um, the founding fathers of the US, some were Christians. Uh, many of them were deist. Uh, so while Christians and Jews are theists who believe in a, a real God who's involved in human affairs, probably majority of the founding fathers uh, as academic and intellectual people, people of you know, background in law professions, maybe some academic, academic background, or at least they were educated. Uh, it was more common for those kinds of people then in America and Europe to be deist. That's a person who believes that just maybe God created the universe and then just let it go. Or God created the world and he let it go. He's not involved in any way with, mod with humans or human affairs. So they're not Christians. They just think there is a God who made things and that's it. He let everything go. He's maybe on vacation somewhere enjoying, you know, just maybe been uh, enjoying life on a beach somewhere the past 8 billion years. I don't know. Uh, so, so for Christians or deists, it's just a symbol that's agreeable to all of them of uh, some divine being who's looking at over us. Uh, that's all it is. And there's no evidence that it's Illuminati. Okay, some other variations on Illuminati theories. Um, here's one I was exposed to, and I'll talk about that later. Um, something similar, there's a belief uh, there's a small right-wing organization in the U.S. that used to be bigger and more popular of the John Burr Society. They promote one particular political version of the Illuminati theory. In this theory, the secret societies are the, these two groups, the Trilateral Commission and the Council of Foreign Relations, um, who are the conspiracy trying to bring about one world government, global dictatorship, and again, so, all prominent politicians in the government, uh, in many countries, top leaders in other fields like business and media and academia. Um, 
And to them, people in this, these are the ones that are act functioning now, like the Illuminati. Um, maybe these two political organizations were, uh, the Illuminati evolved into these organizations, or if the Illuminati is behind these two organizations, or they're somehow connected, they're not really clear in the theory, but basically they're doing the work of the Illuminati uh, now, nowadays. Um, so political secret societies. The thing is, these are not really secret societies. These are think tanks. A think tank is an NGO um, where people dig it together and they do policy analysis. They analyze problems and try to come up with new ideas for how to solve national problems or world problems. And they have websites. You can visit their websites and see the work that they do. Um, but as, think, as major think tanks, they have people from different political views, conservative, liberal, moderate, uh, views working on problems together, like how do we uh, make the American economy stronger? How do we fight poverty in Central America? How can we fight uh, hunger and poverty in Africa? How can we promote global trade? Things like this, uh, working on national and international problems. And it's just a place for people to share ideas. And because of that, it's also kind of a good place for networking. So politicians join in order to network, um, get information, get ideas, and network. Uh, that's all. They're think tanks uh, that also serve for networking purposes. And there's no evidence that these are conspiracies, that they're promoting one world government at all. I mean, look at their website and this stuff, that the publications they put out. There's nothing evil about them. So... These conspiracy theories, are they harmless? Is this just fun? Is it good fun? Is it okay if people believe in this stuff? Or is it harmful? Is it somehow harmful to society, to our political world? Harmless or harmful? What do you think? Discuss this for a while.